Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's the Mecca Media Morning Show. I am your brother, brother Hiram Hakeem. And once again, I'm in the building. Speaking about the building. Yes, sir. Guess what? I told you, niggas, I was going to bring something special. I said, yo, next time you see this brother, he was going to give you that knowledge you can't get in that college, a little understanding for your planning. We do mean planning. Anything or anytime you see somebody pulling off the tools and the jewels, Period. It is for us to escalate, I mean, to elevate our own people. Tell somebody, brother, your name one more time who don't know. Crown One is my name. What's the name of your company and tell everybody what you do? Yes, sir. KP Music Records is the name of my company. And, you know, I, I teach and I, I speak over the, the bars, you know what I'm saying, and the music. That's dope, man. So listen, I'm going to go there, man. Um, listen, first off, we want to tell everybody, man, we like to uh, paint positive images of our people every day. That's the most important part. Uh, we use different pastors, ministers, brother ministers. We don't care what your belief system is. We want to make sure that we are combating all the foolishness that you guys are seeing on your timeline. That's right. You see niggas whooping each other's asses on, this, on your timeline. You see women shaking their asses on the timeline. You see half naked grown, not half naked, adult grown women. I don't know if they have an issue with it or not. I am torn, brother pastor, okay? Yeah, I'm yeah. kind of confused, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, I am a man, okay? And so we trying to, uh, every now and then, give you guys something positive to think about while you flipping through that timeline. What are we talking about today, brother? Yes, sir. Well, we're talking about receiving the Holy Spirit. A lot of people have a misnomer or a misunderstanding of exactly what the Holy Spirit is and the importance of it. Um, a lot of people will say, well, you don't need the Holy Spirit or speaking in tongues and the difference between what the Holy Spirit is and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, that's mainly what we're talking about here today. Paul, uh, when he went out to Apollos and I'm in uh, Luke 19, um, he was speaking to the church in Corinth. He was in Corinth and he came across some believers uh, that have been receiving John's baptism. But they hadn't heard of the Holy Spirit. And he said, have you been baptized in Jesus name and received the Holy Spirit? And they didn't even understand what it was or what, you know, what is the Holy Spirit? So he baptized in Jesus name. He laid hands upon them and they started speaking in tongues with full power uh, right then and there. And, and, you know, I could read into it, but it's literally, you know, Luke 19 to give people the reference. So that way you can pull up your Bible or your Bible app, because a lot of people prefer apps nowadays over the handwritten word. For me personally, I like the unalterated, unfiltered word, so I, I buy me a Bible and I keep it on me. You know what I'm saying? Where did this particular Bible come from? You better tell somebody. <laughs> hey, yes, sir. <laughs> this is my brother's Bible right here. Yes, sir. That's right. We have yes, it sir. in the building, man. This is a holy place. This is Mecca media. In Islam, Mecca is the most holiest place in the land. That's why they call it Mecca. Mm -hmm. That's where you go pray and stuff like that. Mecca and Medina. We call it Mecca media to let people know that we are doing God's work here as well. And we do believe that we are Africans stranded in the wilderness of North America. So no matter what you represent, what tribe you represent, what, what's your Ethiopia. tribe? Ethiopia. Right, yes, <laughs> right. Yes, we still brothers through the slave trade and everything as well. So listen, man, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions, man, about the Holy Ghost. Sure. Or is the Holy Spirit, is that different? Same thing. Okay, Same thing. okay. Now, I'm ignorant. So, you know, I'm completely ignorant. I'm, I'm sure I'm yes, a, you don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. Am I going to hell when I see people like old women break dancing? They say they got the Holy Spirit and they be running around like like wide receivers in the church. What the hell? <laughs> what is that about? I think I'm going to hell. That lady is she came in mo damn near getting there, and then the right rhythm hit. She takes off running like LeBron James. What's going on with that? So that is a manifestation of mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Uh, I personally believe the Holy Spirit is a spirit of wisdom right. uh, because that is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, the spirit of knowledge is, is also a gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, I don't think anyone is wrong for doing that. You know, because doing what? Dancing, you know what I'm saying? What Running about the, around. What a, oh, is oh, that dancing? Yeah, dancing in the Holy Spirit. Like when you see people, you know, exclaiming and, and being exuberant and being loud. And well, what about the like one that's that. shooting around the whole damn paradise? <laughs> what about her? That's, that's the spirit. That's, yeah, that's the spirit, you know, because, and it's it's funny. It's like if someone was to do that at a football game or a basketball game, would you question it? Hell yeah. Like, what the hell? This person is running. And, okay, but the, same, okay. but the same, right, but the same cats that paint their bodies. 
and they're very exuberant and happy for a team. I see this metaphor. Yeah. I see what you're saying. They, they see a team. They got you know, team yeah, spirit. They, they, they got team spirit, huh. whether, whether it's the Browns right. or the Pittsburgh Steelers, of which I am a fan of neither. Okay, but okay. I'm just saying, for example, period. The dogs out there, the dogs of Akron, the, the Cleveland Brown fans. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Brown fan. Yeah, no, period. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, so if if I pull up on you on a Sunday morning, synopsis there, you know, sending them there. Come on now. So I, I pull up on you on a Sunday morning, and you wearing full Browns gear, and you even got a Browns helmet on, or not even you a see helmet. My helmet over there. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. or, or you got a, a dog mask on. I'm wild. Uh, why would I say, you know, no, you just, you just very spirited. I'm in the spirit of, of who you are a fan of. <laughs> now, now I'm a fan of God. I'm a fan of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm excited for what he's done, what he's doing or what he's going to do. And I'm praising him in advance. And I'm questioned because I'm showing some type of exuberance and joy. Dude, you, what, where you else should I show it? You put a smooth on that, bro. <laughs> that was smooth, bro. Boy, you a pastor, man. You a preacher, man. Listen, teacher and preacher. Hey, man, that was dope. I like that, man. So uh, where else would you? So usually when people, when we think about spirit, I love the way you made it practical. You made the word practical, something that we can really use. You saying this uh, the Holy Ghost ain't no spooky business. No, no. It is you exuding how you feel about your team and you team Jesus. Period. So why not show out in your in your uh, regalia, your Jesus your Jesus outfit? Okay. Yeah, why? yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we're not regulated. We're not regulated as the times were in the past by legalism where you have to be dressed in a suit or you have to be in a certain tie. Sometimes you might find me on the streets dressed that way because I work in the financial district as well, but mm -hmm. I also preach and teach and I rap. You know, sometimes I might pull up just like this in some ripped jeans and some chains and I'm singing worship on Sunday morning, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm preaching or teaching. It's just, we are believers and we just believe in the Bible and we believe in the Holy Spirit. That's and dope. it doesn't matter necessarily how you look. Now, I think you should also dress modest. That's not to say, oh, I can be walking around with my pants out, you know, my, my cheeks out, or I can be walking around. You better around. not be walking around with your cheeks out. I, hey, Brother, what the hell's going yeah. on? I ain't like some, that metaphor. There's some, no diddy. There's some cats that do that, though. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's not me. I don't think that's becoming. I think you, a man should still be a man, a woman should still be a woman of integrity, irregardless of if you are in Christ or not. But if you aren't in Christ, sometimes you, if you don't know better, you won't do better. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? So okay. I think you should dress modest. So one more thing about this ghost. Yeah, yeah. Since you broke it down, huh? I completely understand. I'm just going with the yeah for sure. The for BS sure. to keep it going. Um, so if I'm barking football style on okay. the Browns, you come to pick me up, right? And I'm in my Browns regalia. The dog knows. I usually wear the ears at, at the house. Okay. And the nose. My wife come out. She be like, "What the hell?" I said, "I got the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the spirit right now." But listen, if I'm barking and whatnot, just going crazy at the TV, is that like metaphorically? Can I call that I'm barking in my own tongue? No. No, I'm not in my no, no. tongue. Uh, well, I mean, because I'm sure you you're, guys. You're, you're, you're in, yeah, you're in the spirit of that particular arena. So I, I, I guess you would say that. I got to go with the metaphor the same way you did it. True, true. To so, make it real. To make yeah, it. Real. Yeah. I'm not speaking in tongue. Yeah. It's yeah. the spirit, and I'm barking. Yeah, yeah. So you guys aren't barking. You guys speak in tongue, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you do it on like boom, right, right now? Like I can bark, <laughs> or you got to be hit with the style. I can I can speak in tongues, you know what I'm saying? But the, Dude, but again, there's a difference between the gift and the gifts. So the gift is the Holy Spirit. Some people can't speak in tongues and feel, oh, well, I've never spoken tongues, so I'm not saved. That's not true. The Bible actually teaches differently, and it's all that's why you have to read the Bible for yourself and stay show yourself approved. Some people will say, well, if you've never spoken tongues, and you'll never go to heaven. That's not what my Bible says. But the Bible teaches, specifically in Luke 19, that if you want the Holy Ghost and you want to speak in tongues, you can. Specifically in Luke 19, as we were just talking mm -hmm. about, these brothers were baptized, didn't even know what the Holy Spirit was. They were baptized in Jesus' name, and then he laid hands upon them and they started speaking in tongues. So, yeah. um, Educate me, bro. What, what is the, the foundation of... Explain the Tower of Babel and what came out of the Tower of Babel. Ooh, okay, get into that. All right, so <clears throat> Tower of Babel, um, 
It's all about descendants. That's why when you open up the Bible, uh, it talks about he, got, he, he, he begat got, this, he got. begat this, he begat this. And it's talking about the sons of the sons of the sons of the daughters and such and how people's lineage were played out. Mm -hmm. So you have Noah, who was the only holy one in, the, in a world of wickedness, which is also referenced by Jesus in uh, the book of Matthew. But going to your point about the Tower of Babel, Noah saves his family and his sons and their wives. They repopulate the earth you have. Um, oh Lord, help me. Um, you have the sons, uh, the sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Ham, the son of Ham, his son, uh, Cush was cursed because Noah got drunk. I mean, not, and people say, well, why did Noah get drunk? If you saw 8 billion people or not even, let's not even say saw, you're on a boat with animals and you're in there for so long and you hear the screams of everyone passing outside of the boat drowning that's traumatizing you know we call it ptsd now because mm -hmm. we know about it you know on my dr umar right, but right. back then they didn't have a word for it so the way they solved the troubles was drinking so no one gets drunk they was messing with the mead yeah, they was messing with the mead you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that was drink you know for he who was has a, 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 a heavy heart he should drink Song drink, that's what the, the Bible Oh, says. wait a minute, hold on, push the ball this is a good story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push, no, no, I, I can't make up the story. I yeah, just, yeah. I just hold my drink right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he had a heavy heart, he gets drunk, and he finds himself dis disrobed. And right. his son walks in on him, uh -huh. sees it, laughs, dishonors him, and then tries to get his brothers to come. Oh, man. What do you mean dishonest? What, what, what this son just saw him. Make mockery of him. Yeah, make mockery okay, okay, of him. Okay. Now, the Bible does you know, say that he did something to him. And what do you he do? doesn't say. just says it recorded something happened. Okay. So as a result, he cursed the son of Ham, just like, uh, which who, is who, Cush. The most, high, the most high curse? No, Noah did. He got the power to curse people? Well, everybody does. It's called word curses. That's what people call it in witchcraft oh. and stuff like that. But oh, okay. life and death is in the power of the tongue. So okay, if I word. speak something over somebody, it's going to, you know, so that, that's what happened with Noah. Noah cursed his son. And as a result, you have Nimrod, mm -hmm. who was a, a mighty hunter before the Lord, very boastful and proud. And, you know, mm, you won't get me in trouble. Mine. <laughs> you better say it, don't so, delay. All right. So uh, when you look at um, the Catholic Church. Oh, OK. And, uh, oh, dang, you about to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, say it, don't delay. Dagon, Dagon, right? Okay. Um, which is... Uh, you know, this is studying sort of some proof. So Dagon is a fish deity, different things like that. And so Nimrod in, in texts and illustrations that you see all over the world in different cultures. Um, this is the origin of languages. You asked me about the Tower right. of Babel and That's stuff like going. that. So, you know, Nimrod gets everybody on one accord and says, hey, let's build a tower to the heavens mm -hmm. and, you know, be our own gods and different things like that. So they start working together and the Lord sees them and he said, if we let this continue, there is nothing that they can't do. Hi, I'm Pastor Eugene Norris, Senior Pastor of Mountain of the Lord Fellowship. Now, I just want to invite you this year as you're designed to grow in the things of God, check us out on TCT. That's Total Christian Television on Ask the Pastor. That's every Friday at 2.30 p.m. until 3.30 p.m. Sharing with you information about the Word of God and answering your questions live. I look forward to seeing you there on Ask the Pastor. So the Tower of Babel um, was formed because they were, you know, trying to build a tower up to heaven and, and talk to God and do these different things. And God came down to confound their tongue. And so that's where, you know, the theory of Pangea, where all mm -hmm. the world's kind of all the, the continents. continents, you know, tectonic shifting in plates, which yeah, is what yeah. science calls it. You've been reading, huh? Hey, man, man you know, uh, I got to be out here. You know what I'm saying? Yes, gotta, sir. Gotta you got to know, know, know what you're saying. I, I wanted to know what I believed and not just know it because someone told me. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> not, You want to know what you believe, not believe, believe what you know. You know. Yes, <laughs> sir. Come on, yes, man. sir. Come on. So, you know, science calls it tectonic shifts, but we know and we believe that God did this thing in uh, Genesis where he confounded people's tongue and that's where you have different people groups as well as different people going to different parts of the globe right 
Um, and so that's where you get the Tower of Babel in different languages. Okay, good, good, good. Hey, man, I appreciate you for breaking that down with me. For sure. Let me ask you a couple questions before, one more before we leave. Hey, listen, um, we want to um, thank you guys. Look, we do this thing every, every single day. We paint positive images of our people every day. And don't forget, the reporter newspaper do the same damn thing. They've been doing it for over 50 years, though. Listen, sir. don't forget, man, they got a whole nother thing that's going on online. It is www.thereporternewspaperonline.com. And there, you can find some of my articles. That's right. I'm a journalist. I don't make no excuses for it. I've been writing for a minute. When I say for a minute, I mean for a long time. <laughs> for the whole time trying to make myself sound young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is what it is, man. So listen, let me ask you something. This is gonna sound crazy, man. Shoot. Um, you said you study um African uh, uh, African history on who we are and everything. So you know we go back to that great land mass across the waters. You know you're a descendant of that as well. Do you believe um um I know you about to say where the hell that come from, bro? Do you believe in dinosaurs? Yeah. You mean dinosaurs one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a different kind of Christian, huh? Yeah. I heard well, some Christians say they don't believe it. They can't believe it because it's not in the Bible like that. You have to look at the origin of words. We go that, bro. So, um, the Bible does not say dinosaurs because dinosaurs is a new, is a relatively new word as mm -hmm. far as when it was formed and where it came from. You have to look at the words that appear not just in the Bible but also culturally across the globe. Words that appear like behemoth, mm -hmm. dragon, and I mean, the first thing that you think of when you think of dragon is not Game of Thrones, but the Chinese Asian culture, you know, then I, you I, look I, at- I, My wife got me messed up. I don't <laughs> think of dragons. She yeah. watched 80 different dragon shows. I'm sorry, man. No, it, no, that's fine. You know, I how to train your dragon, so many different things, but every dragon. culture has a representation, not just in the Bible, but also culturally in their texts and in their stories, talking in descriptive detail about dragons. Man, I, man. As you can see, I can just pull topics to make you stop it because he's going to drop it, okay? Yes, sir. And this man will be here checking us out, man, and helping you elevate your state of consciousness, your state of spirituality, man. I want to uh, thank you for uh, joining me, coming black to the platform to educate our community. Hey, tell somebody, man, where you worship at, where they can come and, and the leader that you listen to and is it local is it akron thing talk to them man yes sir so where they can uh see me um praise the lord and you know sometimes preach uh is pastor bernard and station manson i know brother i know brother bernard yes sir yes sir uh, yes sir he a big boy he pastor, yes he is pastor drip that's what we call him okay okay and what is, is, he, is he in canton he's in canton okay yeah okay. 2237 6th street canton uh southwest uh, down there, free dinner on Tuesdays. So if you're hungry, are you serious? Yeah, free dinner on Tuesdays. Pull up 5:30. If you want to make sure you get a plate, come on Sunday. Sign up. That way, make sure we got enough food for you. That's dope, man. Well, give me some ideas on the plates, man. I know y'all ain't selling barbecue all chicken. Dog. No, no, no. I got to lay Reverend pig feet and all that foolishness. No, no, okay. no pig feet, no hog bob. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, barbecue chicken. Okay. Um, famous Alfredo. Um, so food Sundays and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, okay. two weeks ago we had uh, breakfast. You know, what I'm oh, saying? pancakes, bacon, your sausage. You had what? your eggs. You had your grits. You have a full functioning church. Yeah, that's dope, man. Big us, man. Yes, sir. Big us, man. Uh, you give money to your church? Yeah. What's that? What's that called? Ties. Hmm. Ten percent of the gross of the gross income. Why can't I just give a charity? You can. You can. Charity is whatever the hell I want to give. Yeah. I like the, I like the, I like the singing today. I'm just a, I like so, the singing. Yeah, I like general the offering. I'm yeah. so on the gen, It's called a general offering. Yeah, they can't shame me because I'm putting my little, you know, no, my little bit. No, up. and anybody that does is not does not have the spirit of God. And that's why I started with this conversation talking about the Holy Ghost. Because if you actually are worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth, you shouldn't shame a person for giving a penny. Now, that is between them and God. You know. If you have more, I say give more. If you don't have it, give what you can. If you don't have it at all, we're going to pray and, and believe and hopefully, hopefully put you in a position of knowledge or resources so that you're able to not only provide for yourself, but also support the church that supports you. Oh, man, you're making me feel like giving somebody <laughs> a dollar or two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thanks for coming through. Hey, yes, listen, sir. man, for the uh, reporternewspaperonline.com, for AkronHipHop.com. I am your brother, Brother Hiram Makim. Y'all better have some fun and get something done, y'all.
Hi, my name is Stephanie Singleton. I'm a licensed wedding officiant right here in Akron, Ohio. I offer the first and only drive through wedding ceremonies here in Akron, Ohio, where couples come from all over parts of Ohio to make their love official. Now, it, let me tell you a little bit more about our drive through ceremonies. Now, it's not the full wedding. It's not vows or rings. It's something where couples need to make joint decisions now and plan a wedding for a later date. I have many couples who come to Akron who um, um, need to make joint decisions because they want to buy their home or they want to make medical decisions or they're in the military. There's so many reasons why the couples use our drive through ceremonies. So if you're interested in learning more, I want you to visit my website at www.drivethroughweddings.info.